He asserts Devon's claim to being the pound-for-pound -pound king. Haney highlights Devon's unparalleled achievements, citing his journey to become undisputed against Cambozos in Australia, his move to another weight division, and his willingness to face formidable opponents, including the feared and avoided adversary. He firmly believes that Devon currently holds the top position in pound-for-pound -pound rankings. Haney acknowledges Terence Crawford's performance, but questions the extent of credit for a fight against a potentially weakened Errol Spence moving up to 154 weight class. Bill is determined not to have fans unquestioningly believe everything Devin says. He emphasizes that nobody has surpassed Devin in terms of opponents faced, particularly referring to Tank's dance partners. Bill asserts that there's no need to degrade other fighters to establish one's worth and contributions to the sport. He criticizes Tank and his team for consistently misleading people. He urges fans not to be influenced by Tank's team and their narrative, dismissing their insignificant fights as contributions to the boxing culture. According to Bill, Devin embodies the true essence of boxing and its representation in the cultural context. Bill ensures Devin understands that the initial deal remains an option, although the person to contact is unspecified. He addresses an unnamed individual, possibly an ex-boxer, advising them not to fall for the propaganda spread by a certain group, urging them to disregard such misinformation. While they emphasize numbers and acknowledge the success of their event with a fantastic turnout, it's highlighted that collaboration is necessary for a successful outcome. Acknowledgements are made to the progress team for their commendable performance during the buildup, despite ultimately falling short. There's a declaration that a certain individual, referred to as Little Dude, hasn't made a significant impact or impression. It's implied that they've been officially notified and put on notice, marking the era of Devin Haney. The statement asserts that Devin is unequivocally the youngest leader in the boxing realm, removing any ambiguity. An appeal is made for the mentioned individual to reconsider their stance. The offer of 20 tickets doesn't appeal to Devin, prompting a response on his own social media platform. He emphasizes that a $20 million offer holds more weight, particularly if it's coming from the appropriate party. The insistence on pressing the issue is rooted in the knowledge that there's a certain level of recognition associated with his name. At present, there seems to be a trend of engaging with individuals who have notable reputations, as they hold prominence at the moment. The assertion is made that these individuals aren't actually weird, and the intention is to reveal their true character, emphasizing their financial struggles. There's a claim that a certain individual is genuinely financially constrained. It's suggested that offering $50,000 might appeal to their financial situation, although it's implied that this sum might not be perceived positively by others. Eddie Hearn acknowledges the dissatisfaction of both Bill and Devin, he mentions having conversations with Bill Haney regarding significant offers for a fight between Haney and Tank. However, when Eddie approached Davis about the potential fight, Davis declined. Additionally, there were specific details shared by Bill that Eddie refrained from posting out of respect for their private conversation. Eddie expresses his interest in making a substantial offer for the fight between Devin Haney and Davis, but if Davis shows no interest or reluctance to discuss it further, he remains open to other options. Eddie, in fact, perceives Ryan Garcia as a natural next opponent for Devin. He sees potential in Garcia facing champions at 140 pounds, viewing this matchup as an ideal fight between Golden Boy, Garcia, and Haney. Regarding Teofimo Lopez, Eddie perceives difficulties due to potential unreasonableness regarding demands, despite acknowledging Lopez's prowess as a great fighter. Concerning Tank, there's a perception of conflict between Bill and Tank, causing clashes among various parties. Eddie's perspective focuses on seeking momentum and the ability to swiftly arrange a mega-fight, envisioning this as a discussion primarily among their own circles, including Golden Boy and others. On the other side, Calvin Ford seems to have reached a breaking point with Bill's strategies, expressing a desire for them to step back or engage differently. There's a call for a change in tactics or approach to ease the tensions within the scenario. Calvin emphasizes the importance of handling respective business matters, stating that there are still challenges ahead. He indicates a need to wait and observe the unfolding events rather than making premature conclusions. 
His analogy, akin to what his younger associates would say, underlines the need for everyone to focus on their own responsibilities without interference. To him, this sums up the situation. From an adult perspective, there's a belief that Javin doesn't genuinely intend to fight Devin, considering it all part of a calculated plan. It's mentioned that Tank won't engage with fighters like Shakur or Devin Haney unless certain conditions, like rehydration clauses, are met. Expressing admiration for Tank Davis as a fan, the point is made that someone like Shakur, despite moving up in weight, is larger than Tank, likely leading to rehydration clause negotiations. Devin Haney is expected to face similar stipulations, but it's suggested he shouldn't entertain such conditions, especially if he defeats Lino, maintaining his status as undisputed. Stephen Edwards shares a similar sentiment expressing doubt about the likelihood of the fight occurring due to the evident size mismatch between the fighters involved. This disparity in size is perceived as a significant obstacle to the matchup taking place. Steven expressed his skepticism about the likelihood of a bout between Devon and Tank materializing. He's reluctant to delve into discussions about this matchup, citing the considerable weight disparity between the two fighters. Despite being just one division apart, Stephen highlights how Devin significantly rehydrated for his fight against Regis Progre, staying within the rules but emphasizing the substantial difference in weight. He doesn't foresee this fight coming to fruition, believing that both Devin and Tank would have too much influence on setting conditions. Stephen doesn't anticipate Devin agreeing to fight Tank at 135 pounds, nor does he believe Tank will step into the ring against Devin at 140 pounds. Consequently, he doesn't find it worthwhile to engage in debates or arguments about this matchup since, in his view, it's improbable that they will face off. Steven predicts that they will likely pursue separate paths in their respective weight classes. Calvin Ford holds the belief that Devin may not possess the necessary skills to contend with Davis in the ring. He emphasizes that these anticipated fights will eventually occur, but underscores the need for both fighters to continue enhancing their profile and numbers to justify the matchup. The common plea of make the fight overlooks the complexities involved, such as dealing with networks and the differing affiliations of Haney and Davis. For this fight to materialize, it must align with the interests of both teams involved. Ford highlights Tank's proven track record, illustrating his capability to replicate his past performances. He emphasizes the need for the fight to make sense comprehensively, considering various aspects like achievements, actual statistics, and the overall feasibility. Ford implies that during negotiations, every aspect, including past accomplishments, will be scrutinized to determine if the fight is sensible. His advice to those who truly desire the fight is to consider the offer presented and demonstrate their ability by triumphing in the ring. There was an attempt by Bill to incite tension between Devin and Calvin, but it completely fell flat. Bill Haney appeared on a show recently and strongly hinted that you might not be receiving proper payment from Tank. Is he just trying to create conflict to push for the fight between Devin and Tank, or is there some truth behind it? Bill Haney has grown weary of discussions about Floyd Mayweather's era. He firmly believes this is now his own era. According to Bill, Devin has achieved what Floyd didn't at the age of 25. This, he asserts, marks the era of Devin Haney. Bill seems to challenge Floyd, suggesting that while Floyd talks about money, the new era led by Devin Haney is what truly matters. There's a rising contender aiming for boxing's Mount Rushmore, and his name is Devin Haney. He's a two-division world champion and an undisputed world champion, managing significant financial success while ensuring the well-being of his team, consisting of about 25 individuals. Remarkably, there have been no contract issues, disputes, or conflicts with broadcasters. However, Leonard Ellerby responded on behalf of Floyd, aiming to school Bill on the workings of the business game. Leonard pointed out that, being new to the pay-per-view, PPV domain, Bill should understand that neither he nor anyone else can make an offer to Tank Davis. They're considered the opposition in this scenario. Leonard asserted that's how the system operates and refused to engage further in what he deemed as nonsensical back-and-forth discussions. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. 
and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.